A broken bone can be a life-changing event. Today, I wanna to share some tips for keeping those broken bones at bay. We're gonna cover the nature of your skeleton, how your unique makeup plays a significant role in your fracture risk, and how to catch bone stress injuries early to avoid time off training. At a microscopic level, your bones are always changing, adapting to the stresses that you place on them. The miles you run, the weights you lift, and the things that you do during your day all place stress on your skeleton. When a bone is stressed, it must handle strain or deformation. Like bending back a pencil, your bones must handle a subtle change in positioning and return back to its normal state. Placing strain on your bones creates a small amount of micro damage. Imagine the hammer being the stresses that you place on your bones, creating small little indentations on this two by four. Nothing that's gonna significantly significantly impact the strength of this board, but it's still noticeable. This micro damage tells your brain to act, sending resources to the damaged area, placing new bone tissue down, and eventually being stronger in the long run. This is the central idea behind any kind of progressive training, whether you're talking about running, lifting, or anything else. Stress a tissue, it breaks down, your body brings it back stronger. Your bones have toughening mechanisms that prevent this tiny amount of micro damage from becoming a big problem. The decision that our brain has to make is very complex. It incorporates the specifics of what you're doing, how fast you're running, how far you're running, the types of shoes you're wearing, but it also goes through a whole host of factors we still don't truly understand. This graphic highlights what happens as that mechanical strain goes to your bone cells. There's multiple different variables that go into determining whether we're gonna get a positive response, bigger, stronger bones, or a negative response, more brittle, weaker bones. And that negative response is what happens when we develop stress reactions and stress fractures. Truthfully, I only care about what we can do practically, so let's go through some simple things you can do to make sure your bones are adapting and getting stronger. Bone size plays a significant role in the likelihood of your bones breaking. Think about it this way. If I have one two by four, it's gonna take less stress for me to break this. If I stack two two by fours on top of each other, it's gonna take a whole lot more work to break that tissue. It's the same thing with bones. As your skeleton develops, you place new bone tissue on the outside of all your bones. The technical term for this is modeling, and this happens the most during your growing years. When we compare distance runners to multi-directional sport athletes, multi-directional sport athletes tend to have bigger skeletons. Practically, this means you need to be doing something that's not running at different points during the year. Incorporating a rec softball league, playing volleyball with your friends, doing something that involves jumping, stopping, starting, cutting can be helpful because our bones tend to respond really well to this type of activity. So pick a time in your off season when you can incorporate some type of movement practice that is different that you enjoy. Bone density is the amount of bone tissue present in a specific area. A denser bone is a stronger bone. And a 10% increase in your bone mineral density can delay the onset of osteoporosis by around 13 years. On the other side, a 6.4% decrease in bone mineral density during childhood has shown a two times increase in fracture risk during adulthood. Your bone mineral density is gonna change throughout your life. Similar to increases in bone size, we see the biggest increase in bone mineral density during your growth years. Lucky for us, we can kill two birds with one stone because incorporating those multi-directional sports also helps us build denser bone tissue. Let's imagine that this piece of foam and this piece of wood are the same size. It's gonna be easier for me to break down the less dense foam versus the more dense wood. Sport participation plays a role in how dense of a skeleton you're gonna have, but so does your relationship with food, the medications you take, and a lot of other variables. Bone mineral density can be a complex thing. Like bone size, runners don't have the densest skeletons. Adolescent female runners have shown lower bone mineral density compared to other sports. It's been shown that around 40% of female adolescent runners have a DEXA of negative one or worse. That means that they have osteopenia. And adolescent runners that have low bone mineral density are at a five to six times greater risk of developing a bone stress injury. The architecture of your bones also plays a significant role in your fracture risk. Multi-directional sports can again improve your bone microarchitecture, making it better designed to deal with the demands of running, but so can incorporating a quality strength plan that loads the bones you stress when you run. You can incorporate a quality strength training plan with 25 minutes twice a week. You wanna make sure you're picking a big movement, like a squat or a deadlift, something that places you on one leg, and then something that forces you to move with weight. Here's a sample of a typical lifting program I would give to a runner that's trying to improve their bone strength. Reducing your risk of developing a bone stress injury can be simpler than you think. Hopefully incorporating some of these principles will help keep you training and out of my office.